church. Stand with us. What a wonderful day to be praising our Lord. Amen. Go ahead, Nikki. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Power, power, <laughs> yay. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday, happy Palm Sunday. Amen. Yeah, glorious day in the church. Somebody greeted me today, I'll leave him unnamed just for privacy. He said, happy Palm Sunday. Uh huh. And I thought it's hysterical, I, I laughed. I thought it was really, really funny. So ha ha, so Palm Sunday, right? fun stuff so but welcome we are so happy that you chose to worship with us today it is going to be a glorious day in the house of the lord amen so welcome 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 we want to also pause and welcome those that are here on facebook not probably not on youtube yet but facebook land out there special welcome we thank you for joining us as well through that uh streaming device so and also we want to pause and welcome those of you who might be here for the very first time so if there's anybody here for the first time if you want to slip your hand up just like this we have some ushers that are making their way up from the front and they have some goodies for you the first First thing that they are going to give you is a card that looks like this. It's a Get Connected card. Attached to it will be an ink pen. You can fill out the card. We'll get to know you a little bit better with that card, make outreach to you, and just love on you as much as we can. Now, if you turn that card in the foyer at the end of service, you will get a book for free. It looks like this, God's Promises for Your Every Need. So we encourage you to be blessed by that book as well. Now, in a couple of moments, we are doing BGMC. You can see buckets, pom-poms, you know, so hold tight. It is coming, but we have a couple of announcements first. We want to remind everybody that we are in the middle of a three-week Daniel fast. And what's been really encouraging is hearing uh, from many of the people that are involved with the Daniel fast. And I thank you to those that are participating in it. Some cannot do the whole Daniel fast, but can do a modified version of it. And that is wonderful. We are uniting together as a body to do that fast. And I know there's going to be blessings that come from it outpouring of the Lord uh, as we unite and do that out of obedience. So let's say you have not been able to participate yet in the fast. You know what? You could still pick it up right now. If you have any questions, you can contact the church office and they'll get you on target. It's never too late to uh, start that and get some of that time in. All righty. We got one week, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages till Easter, right? One week, our countdown, right? One week, okay. We are having the Living Lord's Supper being held here, 8.30 and 9.30.
and 1030, all right? Now, we have a practice uh, this evening, actually, from 3 to 6, for those that are involved in the walkthrough, the, the, uh, the group coming in, the musicians, and also the gentlemen that are working on the Living Lord's Supper. So we encourage those people to come and make some final detail arrangements on that. So Thursday... April 14th, ladies, for Bible study. We are gonna have a little Easter party going on. Now, there is gonna be an Easter hat contest. I know there's ladies out here who have participated before. I see smiles out there right now. Come wear your favorite hat. We're gonna have a contest and a dress parade. So, sounds like fun. Ladies, be there or be square. Now, also, Easter Sunday, we're going to have an Easter egg hunt for the children out somewhere. Not exactly sure yet, but P Pastor Megan has that arranged. But we are needing plastic eggs and candy, non-chocolate. If you're able to fill the plastic eggs in advance, that would be fabulous. If not, we'll get them all filled for you. And we're going to throw them out there and let the kids run. And we're going to get them sugared up ha -ha, and send them home. <laughs> It's so terrible. The kids passed for me never goes away, you know? All righty. Living Lord's Supper, 8.30 and 10.30 next week. Be there, be square, bring your friends. We have announcements out there, little squares cut out. You can pass them out. There are tickets so people can get in and uh, be blessed and hear the gospel. And that's what it's all about. So thank you, everybody, for that pause. At this time, we're going to have this lovely group of children. And we have a couple of leading uh, youth that we're going to bring and invite up as well to help with BGMC, come on up, you guys. Come on up. All right, now we got a new timer. Mm -hmm. We've got new music. Uh huh. So I don't have the dance moves yet. So we're going to create some dance moves and see what we need to do, right? And we extended the timer out for two minutes, right? Bigger building, right? And there's a lot of rows to run up and down. So that's what we're going to be doing. So you guys can go all the way down there. So just bear with us for a moment. And we got some, some of the teens here have been in Kids Church. They know the drill. They're helping out. We thank you, Justin and Samantha, for that. And they're in lineup in every row. So while we're talking, in case you aren't familiar with BGMC, it's Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge. It is our children's missions program where they help gather money that is going to bless other children in other countries. Our missionaries get access to that funding to help with materials uh, that kids need, Bibles in their own language, uh, Sunday school materials, Material, puppets, sound systems, all that stuff that you need to reach children, our BGMC money helps to do that. So it is an amazing campaign, and we're so glad to have the children here. Now, as you know, we have a contest every month, right? Boys versus girls. They don't sound very excited. Come on boys versus girls come on this is big stuff here right okay so for the month of March we had a total okay hold on to your seats don't faint okay seven hundred sixty dollars and thirty two cents yeah 760 souls have been touched for Jesus just from that money in the month of March and a third that are 32 cents as a third of a person, right? So we got it. So let's see who won while they're getting situated, all right? Whoever won, girls or boys, brought in $433.34. And I'm very excited to announce it was the boys! Woo! boys are cheering so that is exciting so we're going to see if we can uh, redeem ourselves a little bit ladies this month they look ready to go awesome awesome okay on the count of three you guys are going to run and you guys got to return back and we're going to dump the money in these buckets it's going to be so loud it's going to be beautiful go get a pink bucket miss gloria or carry the yellow one there we go on the count of three. One, two, three, run
girls. Hold on, boys. Hold on, boys. Okay, I brought more girls. More girls. More girls. That was a lot of bills there. All right, girls. Thank you. Let's listen over to the boys. Okay, gentlemen. But you guys can clean that up real quick. All right, and Jimmy has to come on in here and get his money in real quick. Let's listen to Jimmy in. Here we go, Jim. Okay. Oh, there we go. All right, I'll pass these over. Here we go. Okay, guys, you guys can go have a seat right over there in the front row for worship. God bless you all. Thank you for your participation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was wonderful.
bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We welcome you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Shout the hit. 
Hallelujah. Are you excited to be here? Yes. Amen. The Lord's here. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to enter into a time of communion with the Lord. And by participating in the Lord's Supper, we are once again reminded of Christ's sacrifice and its significance for our lives. Could I please ask the ushers to come down? And if you need the elements, please let them know. Just raise your hand. This is an occasion of thanksgiving for the salvation and blessings that God made available by Christ's death on the cross. Amen? Not just physically, but spiritually, because we all know he rose again. Amen? One thing we should do, however, and, and this is something where we don't have to really get scared or anything, but we should make sure that we're right with the Lord before we partake of communion. So I would ask you to please repeat this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me, cleanse me, set me free. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died and rose again. Today I make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians 11, 23, 24, Jesus on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he held it up and he told his disciples, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me whenever you do it. So we should remember right now what Jesus went through for us with his broken body. Lord Jesus, as we take this bread, we remember that you are the bread of life. We remember what you went through for our sins. You were sinless, but you took all our sins upon your back. And we thank you for that, Lord. Let us take the bread. In the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup, held it up, saying, this is the cup in the new covenant of my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, as we drink this cup, we remember that you are the giver of life. You are our forgiveness. You take away all our sins and you heal us. And you also bring us peace. We thank you for that. Amen. Let us take the cup. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. He washed it white as snow. That makes me feel good. Amen. Right now, we're going to enter into a time of prayer. And I'd like to ask our prayer team to come forward. I'd also like to let you know that if you'd like a prayer cloth, we have the ushers here with the prayer cloths coming down. We know that the prayer cloth in Acts, it was told that Paul had worn aprons and used towels that he had touched. And when the disciples took those out and passed them out, there were healings. There were even demons that came out of people. And we know that it's not the cloth itself, it's our Lord Jesus that does the healing, amen? But it's a reminder for us. I carry one in my truck and I look at it sometimes when I need help and I just say, Lord, please free me from whatever's going on at this time. It's amazing what he does. It's a daily thing. So we thank you for that, Lord. How many of you in here have had healings? How many of you in here pray? Amen. We should all be doing that. In Matthew 21, 22, Jesus said, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. How many of us believe in here? Amen. I'm going to do one thing here I haven't done for a while. I'm going to count down to three. And when I get to three, let's let Jesus know that we love him. We're going to say Jesus as loud as we can. One, two, three. Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So I encourage you, if you need prayer, to come down to the prayer partners. They're here for prayer. If any of you don't want to get out of your chair or can't, we have prayer partners that will come around and pray for you as well. And right now, I'd like to just do a corporate prayer over everybody here. Lord, as we enter into this time of prayer, we ask that you would be with each and every person here. Touch each and every person right now from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. Whatever their needs are, Lord, Whatever it is, whether it's a healing, it's a financial need, whatever it is, touch each and every one of them through and through. We ask for healing 
in their bodies, in all our bodies, whatever it may be. And we know, Lord, that with that mustard seed of faith, we can accomplish anything. How many here have a mustard seed of faith this morning? Well, I've got an avocado seed of faith. Amen. I don't know of any other seeds that are bigger, but if I did, I'd probably talk about that too. But we know that all we have to do is ask for him and he'll heal us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. the Lord. There are those who, there's at least one that has gone to ER, Lord, you know that. There are several who have called in sick today, you know that. Nothing has taken you by surprise. We as humans face the unexpected, the surprises, the financial, the physical, the emotional, the mental strains of this life that we are in. But praise the Lord, thank you for the one who died on that cross, who took upon his back the, the sins of the world and, and his, his side was pierced for the redemption. For those who 
may not have come forward and may not have raised their hand. Lord, we pray for you to intercede in their life, to do something special online and in the physical building today. And those who are, uh, who are not here, sick and afflicted at home, Lord, we just pray that you would raise them up in Jesus' name that you would encourage us mind, body, and soul. We thank you, Lord, that our team has brought us to the throne of grace. We have fellowshiped around your table, and, and we can rest assured that you give us peace that passes all understanding. You give us strength when we are weak. You touch our bodies and our minds when nothing else can soothe our hearts and our lives. I pray that we would all submit to you and release our fears and our concerns to you. Ah, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your presence. And all of God's people said, Amen and Amen. Oh, I forgot. Amen. That's the exclamation point. Hallelujah. We have a little video announcement for you. Good morning. In just a few weeks, we're going to be presenting the Living Lord's Supper right on this stage in our new sanctuary. No, Peter, it wasn't you, nor Philip, nor Simon, nor Thaddeus. But as the scriptures have told, one of you will betray him. And it was all according to God's plan. Powerful. This morning, I am Theophilus, the narrator. I'll be narrating the Living Lord's Supper on Easter Sunday morning at 8.30 and 10.30. And Jesus and his band of disciples will be on this platform and we will be presenting the Last Supper, in a powerful and moving presentation, the Living Lord's Supper. That's Easter Sunday morning, April 17th at 8.30 and 10.30. Free tickets are available at the welcome booth in the foyer. Please pick some up and pass them out. You'll be glad you did because this is a very moving and powerful presentation. Join us Sunday, April 17th, Easter Sunday morning at 8.30 and 10.30. God bless you. Amen. We hope to see you right here. Again, thank you for joining us online and thank you for being in the house of the Lord. I can't think of a better place I'd rather be on any Sunday or any day than in the house of the Lord, in his very presence. So thank you for joining us. Welcome to AJ First, and what a day this is going to be. It is Palm Sunday, and if you haven't heard, Hosanna. Hosanna. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. We uh, have been so blessed and worshiping the Lord in our tithes and offerings is a great thing to do. Uh, we do this every week, and some of you bring your tithes and offerings by during the week, and, and somebody wanted to hand me their tithes and offerings this morning, and we so appreciate it. I, I don't know how much is in there, but we receive the tithes and offerings, and we are to be cheerful givers. Amen. 
Thank you for tithes and offerings and missions and community outreach, BGMC and Ukraine, and uh, we, we give to a lot of different things. So thank you, benevolence and, and these other areas. Thank you so very much. And on, on this back wall, there's some green tape uh, mask out there. It's our missions board that's going up, and it's going to tell you about our missions, and you'll be reminded every week when you come in about our missions. And, and so thank you for giving. Because of your giving and continue giving, we're here today in a beautiful sanctuary that the Lord has provided. Thank you for your faithfulness and your obedience. Deuteronomy chapter 16, three times a year, all of your males shall appear before the Lord your God in the place which he chooses, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, at the Feast of Weeks, at the Feast of ta Tabernacles, they shall not appear before the Lord, and that is capitalized, and hopefully we learned something last week, when Lord is capitalized, <laughs> that's the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, and his host of armies with him. Just a thought there. And, and we're not to come into his house here in Deuteronomy empty-handed. Well, don't shout me down there. <laughs> We're not to come in empty-handed. Every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing. Yes, it's in there. It says blessing. P Pastor Dallas's version. According to the blessing of the Lord your God that he has given you. He's given us here in the United States much. And he only requires us to give back according to what he has in the scripture, a tithe, a tenth, uh, as he is able. So thank you for your faithfulness. Drop boxes are in the back. Uh, you can bring your offerings by Monday through Thursday, 8 to 4. And also, Lisa and I, like Lisa and I, we give online. And thank you, thank you very much for giving to the Lord. Bringing your gifts to the Lord. And everybody said, amen. amen, exclamation point, hallelujah. Thank you for connecting with us online again today and, and in, the, in person. God bless you. Today is Palm Sunday, and thus uh, the title of the message is The Triumphal Entry. Before I get to that, our volunteer workers are few and far and in between. We have four left here, and we're keeping them busy. And they got installed the ADA lift behind that door, behind that curtain is an ADA lift. Hallelujah. We want to thank the company for not sending very good instructions. <laughs> what hair the mappers have left, they were pulling it all out. We're still waiting on the cross to go in uh, back in the back here and the sound panels and a set of speakers and the mission board, but we're, we're to the glory of God, it will be completed when it's completed and it will not be completed until the time that it is completed. Thank you for that profound word, Pastor. We better get into the word. Let's go to Psalm chapter 24. It says, lift up your heads, O gates, O you gates. And be lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Have you had your doors open this morning? Have you let him come in and flood your soul? The king of glory is knocking on the door. Are you listening? Are you allowing him to come in? Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. And everybody said, amen. Come on, can you make that exclamation point a little bit louder? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his scripture. We know it will not return void. During this Passover time, Jerusalem is hustling and bustling. 
Every Jewish male within a 20-mile radius is obligated to come and attend this celebration. These numbers, uh, th th this number was added to by many more who were crowding in from further fields and further areas on this occasion. The William Barclay commentary says there could have been up to 2.5 million people bustling in and around Jerusalem at that time. Now, if you take half of the population of the Phoenix and surrounding area, that's how many were bustling at the time of the uh, Passover. The triumphal entry occurred on Sunday of the Passion Week, which we recall in the four Gospels, of, and it's a great significance. Jesus will be proclaimed the Passover Lamb. He heads into Jerusalem for the last time. He, he initiates a massive public demonstration, and he offers himself to be king of Israel. Jesus normally moves quietly. In fact, how many times in scriptures does he heal someone and he says, don't tell anybody? But here he's making a, a, a motion. He sets in motion a huge crusade. Why? It, it's to proclaim, hey, Jews, this is it. I am the Messiah. Don't miss it. How many missed it? And the same thing, the Lord's knocking on our doors. And uh, on the doors, uh, if you're tuned in online, he's knocking on your door today. He wants to come in and rule and reign and, and give you peace that passes all understanding. Will you let him in? He's making a proclamation so the Jews can't say, we didn't know. And the same thing is true for you and me today. You know. If you're sitting in the house of the Lord, you know. If you're online and tuned in, you know. We've been telling you. And he strips away all of the excuses. <laughs> excuses, excuses. I hear them every day. Well, the devil will supply them if from church you stay away. I just feel like singing a song. Maybe you could join me sometime, baby, and we'll, we're going to sing that. Excuses, excuses. That's the name of the song. And, and so he's stripping all of that away. Ever since the disciples had identified Jesus as the Christ, Peter says the son of the living God in Matthew 16, 16. And Jesus can then state he must go to Jerusalem in Matthew 16, 21. This is a place of significance. It, it, his arrival at a time of the Jewish or, uh, Passover festival is significant. For the Passover was clear foreshadowing of his own death. The Christ... The living Lord is as the Passover. He's going to be the Passover lamb. Are you saturating that? Are you getting that into your spirit today? John the Baptist introduced Jesus to the world as the lamb of God. And John the Baptist was proclaimed. He said, I'm here to pre prepare the way of the Lord who takes away some of the sins of of the world. No, no. Nay, nay. <laughs> I knew I'd work it in there somewhere. Nay, nay. He takes away the sins of the world. In other words, you haven't done anything bad enough that he cannot forgive. That is significant that Jesus Christ was proclaimed to the world as God's Passover lamb. Matthew 21, we're in our text uh, this morning. When they had approached Jerusalem and had come to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two of his disciples. I like to get on the ancient maps. Okay, where is Bethpage? Where is Jerusalem? Where is Bethany? Where, where are they coming from? Jericho to Jerusalem. What? I've never been over there, so I've got to look at the maps. And uh, I did a little research, and you can make the trek from Jer Jericho to Jerusalem in about eight hours. 
However, you are increasing your altitude by 3,400 feet. It's not an easy walk. Matthew does not mention the arrival at Bethany, which John describes as occurring six days before the Passover in John 12, 1, probably on a Friday afternoon. Jesus and his disciples had come to Bethpage, and uh, what does Bethpage mean? I'm glad you asked. House of unripe figs. Okay? Just thought I'd throw that out there for you. House of unripe figs. Bethpage was considered kind of a suburb, an outmost reach of the city of Jerusalem. Back to verse 1, he initiates his final week by sending two disciples ahead into a village, possibly Bethpage or Bethany in Mark 11 verse 1, and find a donkey and a colt colt, and bring the animals to me. Let's read verse 2 and 3 of Matthew 21. And saying to them, go into the village uh, opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. If anyone says to you, what in the world are you doing taking those animals? Okay, I paraphrased it again, Pastor Dallas. Uh, uh, Then you say the Lord has need of them. Okay, okay. And immediately, he will send them. Amazing. Do do you see the miracles that just happened there? Amazing. Only Matthew mentioned a donkey along with unbroken colt. Jesus told the disciples to bring the animals to him. If there is any question of, uh, of what the future apostles were doing, they were to reference it as... The Lord is in need of them. Huh. I just had to stop there and ponder. Just absorb all that, will you? All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. It seems very clear he is making a statement that he is God's Passover lamb. It is intentional to fulfill the prophecy of the Old Testament. Jesus came to fulfill Old Testament prophecy. Zechariah 9.9. What does Zechariah 9.9 say? Well, I'm going to tell you. It's right here. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Huh. We just read that in Matthew 21. And here it is in Zechariah 9. Nine. You might want to know that it is said that Zechariah is the most quoted book of the Old Testament. It's quoted in the New Testament. That's just a side note. Here are three aspects that we're going to cover this morning about Matthew chapter 21. Number one on your outline, a donkey colt is a symbol of humility and peace. We just read it in Matthew 21 verses 1 through 5. Jesus was not only proclaiming that he is the Messiah with the fulfilling of Scripture, but also demonstrating that he did not come to conquer by imposing his will over the nations. The side note, the Messiah is referred to by the term king. He is king, Lord of lords and king of kings. Wanted to make sure you're still with me. Such a lowly entrance was not the normal way that a king enters anywhere at any time. Rulers usually are accompanied by uh, many uh, magnificent horses and, and other army with them. The ruler usually came as a conqueror's riding on a prancing steed. Jesus entered Jerusalem not on a white charger or a black stallion, uh, but on a lowly beast of burden, not on a horse as a symbol of power, not on a horse-drawn chariot, 
which represented power and might, but on a donkey, a colt of a donkey, as a symbol of humility and peace. Let's go to Isaiah 11. He is the peaceful king of the people of God, not a revolutionary with political interest. Now, all of the disciples and, and Simon the Zealot, he was, he was hoping that they would take sword and that they would rise up as an army and conquer Rome and the Roman Empire. And Jesus was saying, nay, nay. nay. <laughs> Roman rulers rode black stallions followed by chariots and thousands of soldiers marching in with shields a gleaming and all the pomp and circumstance that follow that. The next time Jesus comes, I'm here to tell you, he will not be riding a donkey. Uh, Revelation 19 gives us a visual that he comes as a conqueror. He's going to be flying down on a white horse and he from heaven and tens of thousands will be riding with him according to June 14. You see, the first time Jesus came, he was a suffering servant. servant. The next time, he is a conquering king. Oh, he's coming back. He is the king of kings and Lord of lords. He will come back. And the question today is, are you ready? Yes. No, 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 no. Are you ready? Yes. Hallelujah. It's one thing to be up here and cheerlead a crowd, but you've got to make sure you have the Lord Jesus in your heart and life today. Now, the second thing on your outline, the king is acclaimed by the people in Matthew 21, 6 and 8. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the, they brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set on him and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Notice that the disciples <laughs> obeyed what the Lord had commanded. Just throwing a little question, are we obeying what the Lord has commanded us to do? It got really quiet. The disciples got the animals. They threw their garments on them and placed Jesus on the unbridled, the unsaddled donkey. I used to own a horse, and you would never ride a horse bareback, bareback. You always put a blanket on the horse. Just a thought. Got a lot of side notes, just some points to ponder there. You, you, we've got to catch all these little things, the significance of what's going on. They put their cloaks down, and that can come out of John chapter 12, the spreading of palm branches five days before Good Friday and seven days before the resurrection. As we are ex extract our celebration, we are celebrating the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. And for the Christian, we ought to be in awe. He, listen, he came as, as a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. But the next time, you better be ready when that trumpet sounds. Be ready to meet him in the air. Hallelujah. Most of these people were pilgrims from Galilee on their way to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. We had the Passover today. Did you get the meeting? Were you grasping? I am so glad that we receive communion every week. I, I want to apologize to the congregations before when we, we did it uh, not so often. And, and man, it never loses it, 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 its mystique and it, its power and it, its peacefulness. And, and, and wow, we, we, we make amends again. Lord, forgive me. I do not want to take this unworthily. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to receive this communion again. We don't have to trek anywhere. We don't have to go anywhere. We receive it right here. Jesus says, as often as you do it, remember me. 
They were familiar with Jesus and all the miracles he had performed in Galilee. The crowd spreading their garments and palm branches on the road and as he often was often done in a triumphal procession. You can find this in 1 Kings and 2 Kings. You can read 1 Kings 1 and 2 Kings 9. It tells about the triumphal entry uh, of a king. We need to realize that Jesus Christ came to die for our sins and he has already paid the price for our iniquity. All of our sins, he has paid the price. You know, if he never does anything else for me, he doesn't do anything else for me. His forgiveness is enough. I owe it all to him because he paid it all. And whether he does any, let, let, let me get this. If he doesn't do anything else for you, how many times do we go into prayer? Give me, give me, give me. Lord, I need you. I need you. That's the, that's the position we're supposed to be in. But what if he didn't do one more thing for you, would you serve him? Hmm. Uh. I owe my life because of what he did on Calvary. It's Palm Sunday. Thousands are, are in their homes now watching a, a, a myriad of uh, uh, preachers on TV. You might be tuned in online and we're grateful that you are. And, and COVID has affected things and, and, and some may never be in the sanctuary again and in close proximity in places. I, I get it. And, and we, we just pray that we, and I thank the Lord for the airwaves and I thank the Lord for the opportunity to go out. And thank you for reposting so we go out to hundreds if not thousands every week. Thank you for doing that. But right here, let's go back to 33 A.D. There are no TV cameras. They're in Jerusalem, and, and there is a teacher who stirs the hopes and excites the crowd. And they're saying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Three years he went about teaching and healing the sick and feeding the hungry and raising the dead. There might be a couple in here we need to... No, just kidding. <laughs> Some things I need to let just go ahead and fly through. <laughs> if you're saved, then you know it. Say amen. Yeah. All right, you're alive and well. Great. Listen, they wanted an earthly Messiah to take over, to give them material wealth and not a suffering Messiah who was going to die on a cruel cross in just a few days. To provide forgiveness and a call of a life commitment. Oh, we don't, we're not supposed to use commitment today. Baloney. We are committed to him. Amen. Amen. Jesus didn't promise release from all the suffering in the world. My, my. Be honest. Anybody suffering here this morning? Financially, mentally, emotionally, physically? relationships with somebody's all messed up. Jesus came to help us and to heal us and to provide for us. He said in Matthew 29, 11, 29, take my yoke upon you. Verse 30, yoke is easy, my burden is light. The Greek word for easy appears only once in the New Testament and then in connection with yoke. Hmm. Huh. Are you yoked to the mighty one? Are you yoked? He says, my burden is light. My yoke is easy. Uh-huh. Lord, following you it ain't always going to be easy, but I take that yoke upon you. If I trust, if I, tr if, tr are you having a hard time saying that word today? I trust in you and you will help me. Number three, the king is crowned with praise. Can you just raise your hands and just give him a little praise this morning? Oh, hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. Hey, I'm breathing. I'm alive and I'm well. I, I, I'm still standing almost five foot eleven. I've shrunk a little bit, but that's all right. Thank you, Lord. And 21 9. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Hallelujah. Notice at verse 15, even the children were singing and praising the Lord. And they sang Psalm 118, 25 and 6, 26, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna is from the Hebrew. It means save, deliver, save us. We pray, Psalm 118, 25, save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. And prosperity is a broad range. It is a broad range of things. It's not just financial, but it, it's power and might and peace and so many things. And it is a prayer of deliverance. Save now. I, I don't know. Were you saved? Did, did, did Satan have his ugly teeth in you? Did he have his, uh, you know, have you wrapped in sin? It doesn't matter whether you were 7 or 4 or 40 or, or 56 or whatever age you were when you received the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior. He delivered you. Lord, once again, thank you. As James prayed that prayer, he delivered you and set you free one more time. Can I have an amen? amen. The son of David, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Verse 10, when, we, when he had entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, who is this? I was wondering, okay, stirred. What, what you talking about? Anybody ask? What, what, what you talking about? Just me? Okay, I'm going to tell you what you talking about. The Greek word translated moved or stirred is, is also related to our word seismic. It renders quake. In Matthew 27, uh, that's when he died, Matthew 27, 51. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked and the rock split. Listen, when he's entering Jerusalem, there was a quake, there was a stirring, there was a shaking, there was, there was movement going on. Are you tracking with me? There was some seismic activity possibly happening as he was moving into Jerusalem. And when he died, whoo, there was an earthquake and the rock split and the veil was split. Can I have a hallelujah? Verse 11, and the crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Sadly, we go from hallelujah, we go from hosanna, we go from praising, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In a few days later, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. <laughs> How could that possibly be? It's amazing. Matthew 27, 20, all of a sudden they're asking, give us Barabbas. On that first Palm Sunday, one might have expected Jesus, the king, to enter Jerusalem on a mighty steed and not a lowly donkey. Before he could come as a king to reign, he had to be a savior who died. A conquering king parades triumphantly into a city with all the trappings and with all the, the pomp and circumstance of glory and power. This king was clothed plainly, not in royal robes, nor in full military splendor, but he rode on a lowly, donkey not a dashing prancing horse 
It is no wonder that all of Jerusalem was perplexed about his identity. Jesus entered, combined the trappings of glory and power and the imagery of humility and peace. It epitomizes the triumphal entry, epitomizes the upside down values of the kingdom. Jesus radically shifted the world's paradigm of greatness and showing greatness to be found in humility, in humble service, in meekness, not in rule and arrogance. Someone has written about this. I could not find the author. He who is the bread of life began his ministry hungering. He who is the water of life ended his ministry thirsting. Christ hungered as a man, yet fed the hungry as God. He was weary, yet he is our rest. He paid a tax, yet he is the king. He was called a devil, but he, out, he cast out demons. He prayed, yet he hears prayers. He wept yet he dries our tears. He was sold for 30 pieces of silver, yet he redeemed your life with his blood. He was laid as a lamb to the slaughter, yet he is the good shepherd. He gave his life, and by dying he destroyed death. A lowly carpenter of Nazareth is also the mighty architect of the universes wow in conclusion Jesus finally approached the ultimate destination of his trip from Galilee to Golgotha one wonders how many of those who enthusiastically one day cried Hosanna were on the other side of the fence crying crucify him lest we fall into that same trap Lord guard my heart and my mind guard my spirit I don't want to be shouting Hosanna and hallelujah one day and then denying him the next day Lord help us let him rule the inner citadel, citadel of your life and your heart. You see, the key to his kingdom was not, is not revolutionary, but one of repentance. To repent of your sins, you must humble yourself as he did. Wow. Following Christ does not mean a life free from life's hardships. Got another hour? I can tell you about some hardships. Got another hour above that? I can tell you the promises of God and what he's done for Lisa and me and my family. Hallelujah. If we renounce sin and take up a cross... And live for him because he is Lord and creator and redeemer. We will never be disappointed in him. The question of the day and that day is still the question of the day. Who is this? Read Psalm 24 if you're in quandary. It tells you about who it is. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So is he Lord of your life today? James led us in the sinner's prayer. Did you pray it? Online, did you pray it? If you prayed it and you meant it from the depths of your heart, you are free from that sin. Now there is a challenge. Go and live your life pleasing to him. Do your best. Don't go back to that old life. There's nothing but heartache and sin and turmoil and disappointment. Give your heart and life to him. He gives you peace. Uh, it doesn't mean you're not going to have a life not full of trials, but he will help you through every situation. Listen, with Christ, the best 
is yet to come. Will you stand to your feet, please? Heavenly Father, one more time, we just ask you to come into our hearts and lives. We want to rejoice. We too want to say, Hosanna. We too want to say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We too want to prepare the way of the Lord. We want to help people prepare themselves for a life worthy of you coming back. When the trumpet sounds, we too will be caught up with him in the air. Hallelujah. Thank you for... BGMC from the very announcements and all that's going on in worship and receiving communion. Lord, may it be pleasing to you. May what we have done today be pleasing to you. Lord, help us not be like the crowd that one day said Hosanna and the next day said crucify him. Lord, protect my mind and my spirit so I will not be tempted to do that same. Lord, I don't want to even deny you as Peter did. Lord, help me. And yet I know in my weakness that could happen. But Lord, give us strength that only you can provide. And again, forgive us of our sins. Come in and help us take all of my heart. All of, No area has a stronghold. I give it all to you today in Jesus' name. And thank you, Lord, for paying it all. Jesus paid it all. And I can rejoice in knowing that heaven is waiting for you and me. Let's sing it together. Because Jesus paid it all. something a little different here this morning I want our prayer team to come back if you need that if you need to say that sinner's prayer again I want you to come forward if you need something and the Lord is dealing with your heart and life you don't have to tell them anything about it you can just say I need an anointing I need prayer today I need to release this I've got to let this go something's bothering me I've got to let it go Online, leave us a message. We want to pray for you. You can get as detailed as you want. You can be as vague as you want. We're going to pray. Right now, we're going to sing this again. Take a step of faith. I don't, I don't know what it is. Just come. You, you can consider yourself dismissed, but we're going to pray. We are here. We are available. Let's sing. Let's pray to the Lord right here and right now. Amen. I hear the same. Say, thy strength indeed is small. Hallelujah. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Cause Jesus made it all. All to him I owe. Sin. Stay. He was.
joining us online. Join us again. God bless you. We're praying for you, and we thank you so much. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord today. We're going to continue to pray. Our altar workers are here. As we leave, greet one another. God bless you. Thank you for coming today. Easter's coming. We'll see you next week. God bless you. Let's sing. Raise the 